There I was watching the Love is Blind walk down the aisle episode where everybody decided yes or no to the marriage. Yet just before Amy walked down the aisle, her father weeped how proud he was and how much he loved her, something I would never have on my wedding day or ever did in life. It is why when I see a little girl held by her, their father so tenderly, his eyes mesmerized by them, I cry. It is why when I see little girls playing at the park with their father, or see grown women gush about how well of an example their father left them, and how to be loved by a man, I cry. I really wanted that. And I think that is why it took me so long to let go of my dad or even admit his abuse. I, might not, I may not get to bury the man, but I have buried the image. To my father, he was just an open dead be deadbeat, but to me, he was a crushed dream. Any girl with an abusive father, even ex, looks to movies and TV to find those feelings that never happened for them. We watch Bridgerton to see what it is to have an emotionally vulnerable man be strong, sweet, and careful as much as caring with your body and heart. We watch rom-coms or even YA films where the loving dad protects and dotes on the daughter they believe in. We imagine the love we do not receive without oddly believing we could without oddly believing we could. I'm tired of doing that. But it's hard to change the behavior or at least make it healthier and more hopeful when the root comes from darkness. So much of my life I had to stay in my head to escape my reality, and as a child that was especially true. My imagination was my gateway to a place where I had friends, was deemed pretty, and everything was perfectly fine with me. No disappointment, no criticism, no teasing, no bullying. I had a loving, safe family. Whether at home or school, it was hard to find anyone with a kind word for me or a hug, and that was my love language. What can I say? I do love a good cuddle. It is why one of my exes, who had the personality of a rock but an ego the size of a boulder, a boulder overstayed in my life, he literally just held my hand. All my exes and friends that I have left shared personality traits with my dad, but always gave me something he did not in exchange for so many things they gave me that he did. I latched on to one kindness they, we, they would provide like it was a lifeline for why I dedicated my life to them, beyond even thinking of having one of my own. Thus, when they left, it was not just the brutality of our end, but again, the crushed dream and the guilt of knowing I can imagine better with and for someone, but never with and for myself. Imagine. Imagination is a powerful tool and is one of the reasons I believe con men like my dad are such powerful manifestors beyond morality, because you really have to see bigger pictures to scam people. Yet, as a victim of his and some of uh, of the other Nigerian king level scams, I see that part of why they are able to go big in their visions of and for themselves is that they see only themselves. Every time I dream, it is with someone, never me moving through my desires as much as sharing them. I dreamt with all of my exes. I dreamt they would congratulate me for the fantastic career I would get once I helped them with theirs. I dreamt friends would celebrate with me my triumphs when in re reality, there was not one thing that I did they did not sour. I dreamt my family would be proud of me if I did this one accomplishment when truthfully, I have done so many and I still have not had, their, had or heard their pride. I made the line for their validation consistently move because the truth is it did not exist and I was doing things and defining my victories by how I imagined it could. You're born alone, you die alone, but loneliness is defined by how you feel alone with yourself. My fear of my own company has made me imagine relationships and their success when from the beginning they were doomed to fail. Of course, I can blame my daddy issues, but I also have to blame my own imagination and how in some way the root of it comes from my own cowardice as much as his conditioning. There was a part of me that felt comfort in how they made me small while I made them bigger. They felt confident in using me as much as I felt brave in their youth, but when it came time for me to build me, even if it meant losing them, I stopped my imagination. I have to reconcile with my self-sabotaging Nate with grace, not guilt, because I cannot live a whole life never imagining where I can go unless it's with others. So 
Truthfully, if my dad taught me one thing, it is that thinking of you alone, oddly enough, you will manifest those that think of you as well. Oh, that's a nice line. So, whew, what a what an episode. But it's something that I've been thinking about a lot. And it's something that I caught. I am the most uplifting, supportive, loyal friend, lover. I the minute you want something, I'm I'm team strategy. I want you to get everything you want for you. And I have given that beautiful quality to the ugliest people inside. And I'm trying to give that that light to me and I'm stumped. You know, it's I was thinking about it as I was walking through a park. I love walking. It just gets me out of my head. Um and I was like if I I, if I had to hire me, I wouldn't, but if somebody else did, they would get the best employee. And I was thinking about that because I am the most diligent, creative, like hardworking person for so many bad bosses. (laughs) I've been like, I kill myself for my job. And now I'm at this point where I really have to work for me, where I, I have to make my dreams come true. And I'm taking snack breaks. I am just, uh, excuse me, boss. Do you mind if I binge watch the new season of Bridgerton? All right. You know, like, and I'm trying to control me, trying to focus, trying to make me feel like what I do for me is big, is going to be big. We'll have rewards, both spiritual material. And it just, it's like feeling a connection to me and to what I want feels dead. I at best get excited about the dream, but not excited enough to execute it. And that's how my dad wanted me. He really did condition me to be a coward like him, but for a different reason. My father was a coward because he lived selfishly. He just lived according to how he wanted. And he was a coward towards consequences, which is why he lied, lied about everybody, lied lied to everybody. For me, my cowardice is how I lie to myself that I am doing what I need to do to get what I want and that I even know what that is. I don't know me as deeply and as richly as I want to or could. And when I think of how much I unpacked my exes, I mean, I really made them better people. And when you go through your whole life being a good person like myself, the problem with that is I feel like my nature is good, but my nurture was horrible. Like nobody nurtured my goodness for it to grow or for it to be something that was for me. My father nurtured my kindness as something to feed his malice, like he could be evil with a kind person because a kind person won't call it out. And if they call it out, it's because they're being unkind. So you call them out as unkind. Like that was the core of our dynamic. And I think it's so, I wrote this song called Dear Amy, which comes out on June 7th, and I'm going to do a podcast discussing it. Um, And basically the whole song, there's a line in the song that's so impactful and it's about what Amy Winehouse and her relationship with her dad and how it kind of reflected on mine. And we both, the line is, we both dreamed of being moms without a man, never could imagine a father who stayed as planned. And I just find myself imagining really great relationships, really great career, a really great body, like everything is in my head. And when it's not in reality, I feel so crushed that I just retreat back into my head. And that breaks my heart because I know that it's, that is such a trauma response from my childhood. That's such a trauma response from my dad. You know, I couldn't please him. If I spoke my truth, he just acted like it wasn't true. If I didn't speak my truth, he was mad that I wasn't speaking my truth, you know? He just didn't like me at one point. Such a dislikable man, right? To be be disliked by the devil means that you're good. But I didn't know that at the time. 
And when I see, you know, like lo- the Love is Blind episode, Amy's dad was just so proud. And all she was doing was getting married. You know, she, he was just so proud and happy and weeping. And I, when I see, even till this day, when I see men so good to their daughters, I cry like it triggers me because I will never have that because my dad not only refused to give it to me, he punished me. He sabotaged me. So I didn't, it's not that I didn't have a dad. I had a bad one. And my father, I put, you know, he was just an open deadbeat. My father really just saw himself as a victim of his choices. Never me as a victim of his choices, right? And he didn't realize he was taking my only opportunity to have a dad which is why I say he was a crushed dream for him. He was like, what can I do? You know, I had childhood trauma. You don't know how poor I was. That's why I leave you broke. Um, And it was so crushing. He was a really debilitating personality because he was so in his own sadness, his own depression, he but could not fathom that if you live in your pain, you actually become it for others. And Bridgerton, things like that, books have been my escape route to experience men in better ways than what I have been able to in reality. But there comes a point where it's just like, it can't always be fiction. It has to be real. I have to get it. And I don't know how. I don't know how to not chase because that's what my dad did. He made me chase him. I don't know how to attract because that's what my dad did. He made me imagine I couldn't. And I'm too old. I may know the root of my trauma, which is my father, but I'm too old to live in it. You're always too old to live in it or live by it. And I'm just trying to figure out what it means to be free of that training, of that pain. And that's what Daddy Recovery is all about. So check out daddyrecovery.com. Follow the podcast on all platforms. And of course, follow me on all platforms, especially as Deandra on all music platforms. Listen to my music, baby.